praise the Lord. Yes. Thank you for choosing these lovely songs because it goes well with what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, especially the second song that we sang, I Would Love Thee, God and Father, that was written by a very saintly lady called Madame Goyon. She was a Catholic lady, but she knew the Lord so well. She knew justification by faith and uh, learned to uh, knew God so personally as a father. And she wrote some very wonderful things. And one of the things I remember reading in her book, uh, her autobiography is when she said, it's equal joy for me to stay where I am or to go somewhere else. And she had very difficult circumstances. She had an unhappy home. Those, she was very rich. She had an unhappy home. Her husband was not kind to her, her mother-in-law. And there was a maid in the house who sided with the mother-in-law, who all of them opposed her faith. And she went through many trials. And, uh, but in the end, God brought her in contact with many priests came to uh, know her and learn about the way of salvation. Even though she was a Catholic, she uh, led a really godly life and had a lot of revelation on God's word and uh, Jesus dying for our sins and accepting God's will for our lives. You know, these days, uh, I have been thinking a lot about um, a lot of my friends and people who were very close to us. Many of them fall sick. Some of them, God has called them to be with him in heaven. And it, it seems like, I wonder who will be the next person, one after the other, people who were near and dear to us. And sometimes I think, oh, I wish I could have gone and seen them just one more time, just to talk something comforting to them or to meet their loved ones or something in that time of sorrow. If I could just be there at this time and hold their hand and just smile at them or do something for them, but I'm thousands of miles away and there's no way I can reach. But thank God some of them I could call by, uh, by phone and talk to them. But I was thinking of that and I used to I started feeling, why am I here? Why did God bring me here? My place should be there and I should have been there with them in their time of sorrow. And that's when the Lord spoke to me. Be content with where I have placed you. That's why this song of Madame Guyon also spoke to me. Wherever the Lord has placed us and we are in his perfect plan, we, are, we have to be content and be there and say, Lord, if this is your will and this is your place where I should be, I'm happy and content to be there. And every day, if your presence is with me and you help me to go through this day, I can face whatever trials I have and I can do my part in uh, blessing others wherever I'm placed. Some time ago, I spoke about bloom where you are planted. Uh, some little flower grows in a rocky place where nobody else sees, but that flower blooms where God has planted. And the same way the Lord has taught me and each one of us, wherever God has put us, be content. And so I was thinking of talking about being content. There's this verse in First Timothy Chapter 6 and verse 6. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Now that's like those two words. I, I don't know. I used to wonder why did God choose those two words, godliness and contentment. Of course, contentment goes with godliness, but God chose to put those two things because we cannot have godliness without contentment. If we are not content and we want to be godly, we'll end up being religious. We just have some religiosity and some uh, thing to boast about. But if there is contentment, 
then that there is true godliness in our lives and so uh, the lord uh, put some words in my mind while i was thinking of the sick people and the lord was speaking to me about being uh, content i thought of uh, a wrong idea we can have about uh, complacent being complacent is different from being content some uh, there are uh, times when we should not be content or we should not be complain complacent things like if we find we will always realize that our spiritual state is not can always improve we can improve and come closer to the lord so there we should have that thirst as the psalmist says as the deer pants for the water brooks my soul pants after thee my lord we should have that hunger and thirst for the lord another area we can be complacent about is our prayer life the lord says pray without ceasing and we always realize we are not praying enough and the lord says you can pray a little more a little time that you get when you are just distracted and thinking of something else turn it into a prayer when you are worried about some loved one or somebody whom you miss you can turn that into a prayer some ang- anxiety about something earthly thing about our children turn that into a prayer so there we can uh, learn not to be complacent in our spiritual life also some habits that we have we want to shake off those habits and the lord talk tells us don't be content with your present state you have to overcome those habits our control of our tongue our discipline in uh, life getting up earlier or control of our tongue discipline in our eating habits discipline in our appearance how we dress and how we take care of ourselves and present, making it pre- ourselves presentable to others and pleasing to god uh if the lord shows us this pride in our lives those are all the areas lack of love those are some of, many of the areas where the lord wants to show us don't be complacent you can work harder you know when we help our children with their studies we tell them we know that they if we know that they can do better and they are making careless mistakes we can say we tell them i'm sure you can do better and if you work a little harder you can do better recently i was watching my uh, children teaching their children how to swim and uh, the father would stand on one end of the swimming pool and the mother a little distance away and the little child was learning to swim and the child knew on one side i have my dad to hold me up if i sink and the other end i have my mom she can hold me up and uh, and the distance get wider and wider but she knows her dad and mom are there and then they both are saying you can do it you can do it just a little bit you can try it you can do it you can do it and that's how the lord wants to teach us also you can do it you can improve in your life don't be complacent complacent you can do it you can work harder in your spiritual life and many times when i see my grandchildren and my the way my children deal with <clears throat> the, their children i learn so much from them how the lord is patiently teaching us now <clears throat> coming back to uh, being content i thought it's very common very easy for young girls especially <clears throat> our daughters when we're dealing with them not to be content like they may feel discontented about their appearance the the color of their skin may be their uh, height or their weight or what are their friends think of them sometimes they feel that their friends won't have anything to do with them some friends don't even want to sit next to them and we can uh, we feel so much for our children when they go through that stage that's the time we can encourage them and say look my daughter god has made us in his image each one of us god has made us in his in his image 
even though we don't see it and we don't believe it that's true because god god's word says that and what is that image he has made is that inward beauty that he has given us the beauty of uh, being a loving person being a patient person being forgiving being compassionate being a friend to people who don't want to be your friend that is the image of god when we when the lord takes up us from this world he is going to, the thing that we are going to take with us is that inner life which we have worked on and which he has given us that image and that's what we are going to take with us and that's the beauty that will shine forever and ever god's beauty jesus said and when it says that when when the lord comes we will be like him the measure in which we have partaken of his nature his humility his love will be like that and each of us will have different degrees of that i believe and i have heard uh, that all of us won't be the same but how much we have worked on that much of glory we will take with us so it's a challenge to us to teach our children and to work ourselves in ourselves also to grow in that godly inward nature the beauty of jesus we sing that song let the beauty of jesus be seen in me it's not like something is going to be uh, suddenly shine through us we have to work in our earthly life we have to work and uh, put our flesh to death and allow the holy spirit to work in us and chisel us and hone us and make us into his image and when we when he appears we won't be ashamed because we have allowed the holy spirit to do that work in us and we can tell our children and we remind ourselves that everything that god allows in our lives will fit into that wonderful plan it says romans 8:28 all things work together for good to those who love god that means it will be for a good plan everything that he allows is going to be a, for a good pa- plan and a good pattern and god's name will be glorified i want to share some verses about being content which i have written down in first timothy 6 and there are other verses uh, verse 7 it says we brought nothing into the world and cannot take anything out of it verse 8 if we have food and clothing we will be content with these and verse 10 first timothy 6:10 the love of money covetousness will um, many people wander away from the faith because of that and they pierce themselves with many sorrows that's the price they have to pay we have to, we have to pay if we are covetousness if we have covetousness and we are not content with what god gives us and there's another verse uh, which says in psalm 107 verse 9 he satisfies the longing soul and the hungry soul he fills with good things if we are hungering after the lord then he will satisfy us and we'll be content with that one of the great uh, champions i i told about uh, madam guyon you can read about her i think you can read her book even in the internet or somewhere but one of the great champions of being content is the apostle paul we know about him this he doesn't say uh, much about himself but we know that he was imprisoned for the sake of the gospel he had lot of uh, beatings and sufferings but he doesn't talk much about it even though he was put in prison he used that time to write scripture and all that he did is to encourage us he encourages us to be content philippians 4 verse 11 says i have learned in whatever situation i am to be content he didn't have uh, a lot of money or comforts 
in prison when he was cold he had he would ask somebody to bring that coat which he had left behind in one of his travels he said whatever state i am i i want i am content and no, not only that he says these light afflictions are momentary but there's a eternal the uh, there's a eternal weight of glory which comes through these light afflictions what we see now are temporal what we don't see is eternal those verses are found in second corinthians 4 17 and 18 we don't look at temporal but we look at eternal our hope is in eternal things how could paul say those things if he didn't have and know the secret of being content in whatever state he god had put him in it's good for us to meditate on this uh, the life of such godly uh, saints then above all we think of our lord jesus christ the king of glory the creator of the universe when god sent him to the earth he was content with whatever the father allowed he was content with the home god put him in he was content with every earthly situation he there were ch- p- opportune chances for him to at least get a ride on a donkey but he would walk mile after mile to meet and bless needy people to heal people he must have been so tired that in the middle of a storm he could sleep with just a cushion under his head he could sleep when the storm was raging we we find it difficult to sleep in a new place even if our pillow is changed we find it difficult to speak to sleep and there jesus we don't but little things like that shows how content he was to come as a man and live like you and me and be content to live this earthly life sometimes and also the food that he ate was just the ordinary food sometimes the people his he and his disciples walked through the fleet and they'd be hungry they just pluck some corn and chew that munch that it's not that they couldn't afford to buy some bread but he lived such a simple life and he taught the disciples also to live like that now when i think of jesus and his life i imagine like this i think suppose i'm caught for some crime that i did some maybe some mistake or some accident you know uh, we who work in the medical field we can give a wrong injection by mistake or some wrong treatment and that person dies or is very critical suppose i have made a mistake like that and i am in grievous danger of getting punished and then somebody comes and may maybe my dad but in this case is the lord jesus he comes and says i'll take the punishment for you and he get beaten for my crime for my mistake he get beaten so badly so much that people didn't want to look at his face you know sometimes i've seen in road accidents when people get their face bashed up nobody likes to look at that face it's so hideous can you imagine jesus for our your sin and my sin getting beaten up so badly that people turn their faces away in the so ghastly to see him and not only that he endured that beating and the thorns put on his head and beaten and blood dripping down from his forehead and finally he dies and just before he dies i see him looking at me and i can see that look of love when he looks at me and says my child i'm doing it for you i love you so much i'll do it again and again for you if i get a chance i do it for you so that you can be free so that you can be justified so that your punish you don't have to bear any punishment for your mistakes and your crime i have taken that punishment and not only that i'm going to come and take you to be with me for i never for i never forever and ever suppose it was my dad or my brother who did that and he died will i ever forget it 
No. And but when Jesus did it, that story has become so common for me that I take it for granted. I say, Lord, just let me think of it like that. Your great love, your love for me was so great, is so great, that you underwent all that punishment and you would still do it for me. How can I continue in my sin? How can I take life so lightly? I want to live live 100% for you, Lord. And you're coming to take me home to be with you. It says in, in one of the epistles that um, we are objects of his mercy. I like that. He just sees us and has mercy and he looks at us as pitiable children who are just objects of his mercy. And say, Lord, you have been merciful to me. I'm just an object of your mercy. Let me not let any pride or complacency come in my life. Help me to be ever grateful to you. Help me to be content, to be where you put me. Content with the lot you have allowed in my life. Content with any earthly circumstance. Anything, Lord, let my thoughts always be filled with you. That's, that's my prayer and that's my longing. So when we think of contentment, uh, I wrote down a few things when we, uh, which helped me to be content. I, I want to be content with the place where the Lord has placed me. I, I sometimes I say, Lord, why do you put me here? It's too good for me. It's too comfortable for me. When people around me and in other places are suffering and they are struggling to earn, to get their daily bread, you have kept me so comfortable. I'm so thankful to you. Help me to be content. Help me to remember those who are in need. And But never be discontent about anything in my life. You know, sometimes... We can be discontent about our uh, physical appearance. As we grow older, we see that there are some changes and we are not happy with that. And say, Lord, help me to be content. At the same time, I want to do my best to not be repulsive to others, but I want to take care of myself, eat healthy, do the things which are right, not indulge in things which are bad for my health. I want to do all that, but at the same time, content with the way you have made me, content with the clothes you have given me. We look at others and we find that they have uh, different type of clothes. And sometimes as ladies, we can be, uh, dis be, we wish that we had clothes like that. That's natural. But say, Lord, what you have allowed and given me, that's more than enough. If you want me to have something better, you, I'll take it from your hand. I'm not going to be longing for it or running after it. I'll be content with whatever you give me. I'll be content with the salary my husband brings home. I should not wish, oh, I had, I wish I had more so I could spend more. I should be, I'll be content with the appliances and the home he has given me. I'll take care of all the appliances which I have in my home and in the kitchen so that it doesn't get ruined and I have to go and buy new things. But I'll take care of it. At the same time, I'll be content. I'm not going to crave after more and more modern gadgets which make things faster and easier. If the Lord wants me to have a better gadget or a, a compliance, he'll give it to me and he'll show me, yeah, it's time for you to change and have a little better. But until then, I'll be content with what you allow. And I'll be content with uh, my children, content with uh, the type of person you have chosen as my husband. Not only content, but thankful. You know, thankfulness goes with contentment. We can't be content without being thankful. We can't be godly without being thankful. To read um, in Romans 1 and 2, 
when man started going down and down, degrading, it all started with the lack of thankfulness in our hearts. So thankfulness is like the beginning, and throughout our life, we should not, we should be that have that thankful spirit, thankfulness to the Lord, thankfulness to our children and our husbands and our siblings, our church sisters and brothers. Thankful for anyone. Jesus said, even if a cup of cold water you give to one of his children, you won't lose that reward. That that's how much he is going to be thankful to us for what we what for what we have done for his children. So thankfulness. And then another way we can be content is we should have our mind and our treasure. On godly things, in Matthew six and Luke twelve, thirty-one to thirty-four, it says, "Seek God's kingdom first." We know those verses. Seek God's kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be added. All that you need will be added to you. If we lack something, and we say, "Yeah, I, I lack in this area." And, and why am I lacking in this? I can say, Lord, in which area have I stopped seeking Your kingdom and Your righteousness? Show me that first of all, and then I know that You take care of my earthly needs. So that's the uh, uh, question we can ask ourselves. That's the test. If I'm lacking, I say, Lord, am I have I stopped seeking Your kingdom? Have I stopped seeking your righteousness? Have the things of this world suddenly crept into my heart little by little, like a rust, and uh, I'm not able to have that godly nature which you want me to have, Lord? If if I'm seeking earthly things and not your kingdom, please show it to me. And every day the Lord will show us. And Uh, in First uh, John, it says First uh, John five twenty. Uh, there's a verse: "Little children, keep yourselves from idols." Now, is an idol is something that occupies our mind all the time. Whatever comes to your mind, and you keep on thinking of it, or a person, you keep on thinking of that person. Then that becomes an idol, and how easy it is for us. To be distracted and keep thinking of some earthly thing or some person or some uh, wish and longing that we have, which is unfulfilled, that can also become an idol. And the Lord searches us and says, "Little children, my child, keep yourself from idol idols." Then um, the Lord says, "Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also." So, if we are if we are um, longing for earthly things and being big in the world and uh, being a great person, then our heart is there and our treasure is there, and then there'll be a uh, lack of contentment in our life coming into our lives. Then yesterday I heard a beautiful verse. You know, we had a funeral yesterday of a. Well, Very beloved uh, brother in our church, and uh, we still are grappling with the thought of the Lord taking him so young. His two uh, biological brothers testified this. They said, "Remember the place where you have come from," and th- and that I was thinking of the same thing. Look at the quarry. From which you have been hewn out of, out of, you know. In the past few months, we were thinking of being a pillar uh, in God's temple, and the different pillars and the quarry from which God uh, cuts out those pillars. This is the um, verse. I wrote it down. Isaiah fifty-one, verse one. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness. 
you we all are pursuing righteousness you who seek the lord we all are seeking the lord look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the quarry from which you were dug sometimes we forget we we forget who we were what rotten creatures steeped in our sin and defeated and the lord forgave us and cleansed us and washed us and we tend to forget and we think ah i have reached somewhere i have reached some spiritual height i brought up my children a little better i'm not getting angry as i used to i have this 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 and we make a check checklist and we forget to look at the quarry from which the lord has picked us up and pulled us out of every now and then it's for us to good for us to look at the quarry a poor wretched state from which the lord picked us up there has there may have been so many sins in our life which the lord has covered which we are ashamed of if the lord were to show it to the whole world thank god he has covered it covered all those sins but we forget it and we think ah i am a righteous person now but every now and then turn back go back to that quarry and that rocky place from which god has cut us and lifted us up and made us stand where we are praise god he reminds us of the verses like this um many verses i read in jeremiah and isaiah where the lord says do you know who you were before i picked you up you were stinking and full of sores in your uh, disgusting state and now i'm i cleansed you and made you what you are and you become so proud and haughty and you forget me and you have forsaken me and turn to other gods that he told israel but he can tell us also when he has picked us up and we turn away from him our back is to him and our faces we are facing things of this world pleasure of this world comfort of this world the lord says turn around look at the quarry once in a way look at the quarry and be thankful then you will have that godliness and you will have that contentment in your life um yeah praise and thank god for all these wonderful uh, things he has given us in these days that he reminds us to be content with what we have and press on to a more godly life and a wonderful life that he has ahead of us shall we close in prayer our heavenly father we praise and thank you for your precious word thank you lord thank you for teaching us these wonderful truths thank you lord jesus for coming into this world and living a life a simple life a life of contentment and showing us how we can also live like that thank you lord for your promises that if we are free from the love of money <clears throat> you will never leave us or forsake us because you are our god you are our helper thank you lord that we can rest on those promises we pray that you will help us each one of us to be content with what you have allowed in our lives and to press on to godliness in our life and more and more contentment in our life we'll be content as long as we are with you lord and you're holding us and you're leading us that's all that we want <clears throat> and we put ourselves and place ourselves into your loving hands teach us lord jesus to be more and more like you transform us let your holy spirit work in our hearts change us into your image lord so that we won't be ashamed when you come you will be proud of us lord please help us each one of us 
we are needy people and so we humbly come to you teach us to be content lord all the days of our lives we ask these things in jesus precious name amen